again, everybody. Uh, I'm starting to believe I may have a problem because uh, I've taken on another project. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, in my defense, I didn't realize this was going to be as much of a project as it's shaping up to look like it is. Um, but dad hit me up today. It was like, hey, got a pop-up came in. Do you want it? He works at an RV dealership. He was like, hey, I've been kind of thinking about getting a pop-up or a small travel trailer. He was like, hey, do you want it? I can get you a really good price on it. I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah, let's take a look. Um, he he took a look at it for me. He was like, yeah, it's good. There's there's a little bit of water damage in one section, but you know, nothing you can't fix. All right, cool. No problem. So it's a 2008 Flagstaff uh, pop-up trailer. Pretty good. Um, the canvas is all in really good shape. Uh, the interior looks really nice, but there's a major water leak in the back. But as you can see, you can see light right through there. Pretty much cracked fiberglass here and there. Not really sure how I'm going to fix that part as far as this goes. Um, I know I'm going to have to take off everything. The door, all of this canvas, everything like that to get this piece off. And then I'm going to have to disassemble all the outer brackets, <clears throat> find some, I think Luon is what they, people are recommending you use instead of OSB. And then hopefully get this all off in one piece so I can get a template of the shape, uh, trace it out, cut a new one, replace this section first. And then I'm gonna have to replace the piece of wood that runs this way too, um, because there's also water damage up in there, pretty much the whole span of that way. So yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a project. Um, wasn't really anticipating it being this much, but I got a really good deal on it and we really want a camper, so. Most of you probably don't know, we used to live in a camper full time. I lived in a fifth wheel. Uh, for about a year and a half. So I'm no stranger when it comes to RVs. I grew up on an RV lot. Um, definitely am no stranger to working on and doing things to RVs. So this shouldn't be too hard. I'm hoping that it's a couple days at most. Um, but once we start tearing this apart, we'll see the extent of the damage and then we'll go from there. Uh, eventually I need to try and find a better place on the property to keep it also because it is a pain in the ass to get this in and out of my driveway currently. So yeah, all these things and more coming up. All right, got the trim piece off finally. Yes. I um, think really all I need to do now is take those bolts off that are, this one's, this one here's not really doing much anyway, but take the bolts off holding these arms. And I'm thinking this panel should just come right off then. Hopefully, I'm not seeing anything else fastening it, so. Okay, got the panel off. There was like a million staples. That's pretty much, it's like all that was holding this shit together. Um, yeah, there's just so many like two inch staples probably all throughout this whole section up here holding this trim piece that closes off this and the side panel. This is what we're looking at. You can see how bad it was. I mean, it was soaked in here still. And I've had this thing covered for since we bought it it's been covered so that water was well soaked into there but we got it off now we got our template for the next piece and look at this <laughs> jesus 
I'm not sure if it's harder or, or less hard than what I was expecting yet. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna keep moving with it. I think for now, I'm just gonna try and get this panel prepped and then we'll go tomorrow or the next day and go get the wood to replace that and the paint to treat it and get it all, get all the new pieces cut out. I mean, really, when I'm looking at it, that's the bulk of the work. There's a few screws on the back. This is gonna be a little challenging from what I've seen to get this to come off. You kind of have to like finesse that a little bit to kind of, especially since this has been repaired one time before already, who knows what they used to glue that to that. Um, so who knows what we're getting into with that, but I'm optimistic still at this point. So we'll see if that continues on throughout the rest of the project, but all right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, it's day two on the pop-up teardown. Uh, I was trying to get the back panel off where like the back of the roof here kind of like rolls over. Uh, it was a pain. They had put, somebody had like patched it in the past and put some fiberglass on there. And then even beyond that, like I can see why they decided to take that route because attempting to try and uh, detach the shell from the wood, just proved to be a really hard task. I had a, a my scraper and I went and got some goo off like a uh, adhesive remover. And even with me babying it, it started cracking the upper shell, which I mean, I was kind of anticipating having to recoat the top, but now it's like I have to because there's holes in it. I was down to my last piece and it was the most intact piece of wood on that whole back. Like everything else was rotten besides this one little spot. And then, yeah, blew a big hole in the in the top here. So I'm gonna try and figure out what I can coat this with. I'm gonna have to, obviously I have to at this point. I was already planning on coating each one of the pieces of woods, um, the pieces of wood that I'm replacing here with a like rubberized paint on type stuff. Maybe something like a flex seal. That's, I mean, I went to Lowe's earlier when I got the goo off um, and I was looking at what the options were available there. And honestly, even though it's like really expensive, the Flex Seal roll-on rubberized paint might be the best option. Um, but the, a gallon is like $100. So I was trying to do this a little cheaper than that. But at this point, I don't really have a choice. I'm going to consult uh, the parts dude at my dad's, the dealership that my dad works at, uh, see what he has to say. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. So yeah, I just wanted to update you guys on my pain and suffering <laughs> yeah that was a little bit harder than the other side i feel like uh just because picking at that was no fun but it's off there now there's still a little bit of um let me flip you around here there's still a little bit of like the wood left over on here like i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get that off i really don't want to cause any more damage than it's already there so i don't know i mean you can see this thing's cracked I, I really fucked it up, to be honest, but I don't know what to do at this point of art. There's no kind of no going back. It was already kind of starting to see to see light through all this. Even when I was babying it, it was starting to kind of crack and stuff. And then you can kind of see here, had a big crack. And then I just was down to that last spot. There's another one. And then this one just... All right, we're starting to trace out the sidewall panel. I've got the... Uh, like aluminum sheet piece that coated the outside got that laid down here and I'm tracing out the shape got a bunch of random stones and shit sitting on top of here to keep it flat because it came out super wavy um, the one thing that is kind of an issue not really an issue I'm having to figure out is that this is an eight foot sheet and I need a hundred inches so I'm left with this flap here I decided to kind of pull it down this way, pull it down this way a little bit, give myself a little bit more so I can get a good sized piece on there. And then I'm gonna have to figure out how to connect those two together because, you know, can't get longer than an eight foot sheet of plywood. So yeah, not a big deal, but just something to note if you're doing this yourself, you may have to kind of come up with something like that too. Yeah, I've got it all traced out now. Took the pencil, came through. You know, pretty simple. Day three, went to the RV dealer, went and talked to their parts department, consulted them a little bit about 
uh, what I wanted to do about coating the roof and fixing the holes made from pulling that back panel off. Uh, they advised against using flex seal on a fiberglass roof. So I'm probably just gonna not do that. It, it was pretty expensive to wanna try that anyway. Uh, he said that if it's a hole any bigger than a dime, he recommends using uh, new fiberglass. So I went and got some sheets, got the resin. I'm gonna attempt to fix that. But first I'm going to take all the wooden panels, the new wooden panels for the walls that I've just uh, cut out. I'm going to apply a exterior grade paint to them to try and help protect them over time and everything, just in case something does get down and into there, maybe that'll help prevent any water damage in the future. Uh, I got some aluminum flashing, white aluminum flashing, and the side panel that's going along the, the side there. Uh, and the original sheeting that came off was, it's all wavy and got a bunch of holes in it from where the old arm had just ripped through and everything, so it just needed to be replaced. So we're gonna try that out. We're gonna take some construction adhesive, glue it back down on top of there, uh, and then take the oscillating tool and go around and cut out the, the shape at that point once it's bonded to the panel. So yeah, I think that's gonna be the easiest way to do it without having to trace and guess and everything like that. I think it'll be a lot better that way. So yeah, we're just gonna get to painting at this point, uh, get these panels prepped and then glue that flashing on and then we should be starting to put it together, back together at that point. So. Hopefully, here we go. Okay, so we got the panel all painted on one side. I'm not gonna paint the side that I'm gonna put the flashing on because I feel like it's just gonna be unnecessary and maybe might make it not bond as well. So I got my little extension piece put on here. I had to put a couple um, brad nails into it kind of just to put it in there. I put some wood glue, trying to hold it together. Most of the structural strength in that little piece right there is going to come from the framing on the, the pop-up itself. So now we're just going to try and put some adhesive on this, roll out the splashing, and get it to stay. That's going to be the fun part. And then hopefully it glues and sticks well. So yeah, let's try it out. All right, now we play the waiting game. Okay, day four of working on the camper. Today I'm cutting the excess metal off of the side panel that I, I glued up yesterday. Uh, the glue seemed to set up pretty well besides on one part uh, on the far end over there. Kind of didn't really bond that well, but for the most part it, it, it connected pretty well. I'm gonna go through with the oscillating tool now and kind of trim off all the metal, cut it to shape. Uh, then I'll worry about re-gluing that side um, and it should be good at that point. So yeah, we're just going to get to cutting. I'll have to find something else to glue that with. I don't know, I'm not really sure about how I feel about that a construction adhesive. I feel like it did pretty well on that side, but I mean, obviously that didn't work very well. So yeah, other than the the glue not really working too well on this end, I mean that, that seemed to work out pretty well. Let's flip it over and take a look here. Yeah, not too bad. Hmm. I mean look at all that adhesive I used and it still didn't stick. Hmm. 
Hmm. Guess we're gonna need something stronger. At least we got the shape pretty much there. All right, we're not messing around this time. Ran to the store, got some new adhesive, got the Gorilla Glue, max strength, $13 for this bottle, so it better work this time. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty unhappy with, with how that other one bonded. Maybe it was because I was smearing it, trying to like get good coverage so it'd be smooth. Maybe that messed it up. I don't know. That is the side I was smearing a bunch. So I'm going to attempt to not do that this time and just try and do beads and then kind of smooth it out from above and hopefully that works better. So, okay, so I kind of had like a little bit of a time crunch because uh, I already had this bottle open and I really didn't want it to set up before I could get to it. So I went ahead and glued this back flap down onto the new wood. Turned out pretty well. I had to come back, come through and put some staples in to keep it down. Put it below where the trim's gonna go. So that shouldn't be an issue as far as water penetration or anything like that. But yeah, that worked pretty well. I'm still gonna have to come back and fiberglass, you know, these big sections that are kind of cracked up and everything. So I'll come through once this is all said and done, that probably be one of the last things I do is come through and fiberglass up all these holes and caulk the, the little things that might be little blemishes like this, where there's like little cracks in it. Um, yeah, I think, I think that turned out pretty well. So what we ended up having to do there, since there's an arch to the camper, like it's a high point in the center, I'm guessing so, you know, it drains water. Uh, we had to lift up from the middle and then fasten the middle, sorry, fasten the middle, lift it up from the middle till these matched where they needed to be and then fastened all those and it worked out pretty well. I took some decking screws, mostly two inch, a couple of three inches here and there just to kind of give that little bit extra strength and went through and, you know, periodically added them to the roof and the side walls and it looks pretty good. I mean, overall, I'm happy with it. So now we just got to try and get all the trim pieces back on. And really, I think the hardest part at this point is going to be getting these holes here for these arms right where they need to be. Cause I want to make sure they're they're where they they're supposed to be, so they don't end up shifting one way or another. What's up, buddy? Yeah. What do you think about it? You ready to go camping? Yeah. What about you, Mama? You ready to go camping? Yep. Okay, so I think I did it. I mean, that looks like fiberglass on there. It looks like it did what it was supposed to. I don't know. My first time doing it. I mean, kind of ugly, but it is what it is. Maybe I'll paint it or something. I don't know. Maybe I'll sand it and paint it. I mean, this much of it's going to be covered by trim, but... Yeah, definitely it's a little ugly. <laughs> as long as it keeps the water out, I guess we're fine. <laughs> okay, we're coming into day four on the camper. Got the side panel on like I was talking about before. Went ahead and got that trim piece on yesterday off camera. I went and got some waterproof gorilla tape and taped the seams because there's definitely some exposed wood i went ahead and popped the trim piece off of this side too and just because i already had it off on the back might as well do the whole thing there was a little bit of water that had gotten to there at some point but it wasn't too bad so i just went ahead and taped all the seams and on the back went ahead and taped the underside too there, it doesn't have, it didn't come with a, a track piece like this. 
to hold the gasket on this back side here. They just had it kind of glued and screwed to the bottom of the wood. And that's probably why it failed anyway. So I went ahead and taped that bottom there. I'm gonna try and find another piece of that. I don't know if that's something they can get at the dealership or not, but yeah, basically at this point, now I'm just gonna put all these other trim pieces back on. Got this flap that goes here. Put that one back on. It's kind of in rough shape. I, I'd like to find a new, another one of those too, but we'll just put it on there for now. And then the caps and the top trim. All right, we are mostly done. I say mostly, there's a couple of little loose ends I have to finish up. This back raising arm right here where it was fully rotted out is, is sagging slightly lower than the rest of them. So I guess I have to get under there. There's like a height adjustment cable I was reading about I need to mess with. Um, I gotta put the, the new gasketing, I got new rubber to put up under here because a lot of that was looking pretty rough uh, where the, the roof meets the body to create that seal. Um, yeah, I got the, the canvas put back on Got the door put back on, which was actually kind of a little bit harder than I was anticipating. I probably should have taken more pictures uh, of how that went up because that was definitely, uh, took me a few tries to figure that out. But yeah, all the trim pieces are put on. It's all caulked up and sealed up, pretty much ready to hit the road. We're probably gonna take it on its maiden voyage this weekend. Uh, go up to like Boone, North Carolina or something and just somewhere kind of close. And there, uh, there's a skate event up there at Zionville Ramp Co. They're, they're doing like a Halloween event up there. So we'll probably go check that out and, and camp up there for a couple days. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, if you guys stuck around this long, I appreciate it. If you have any questions, be sure to comment down below. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.